Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about North, True North, Magnetic North, Great North. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Let's look at the simple one first, True North. True North is the direction that points directly towards the geographic North Pole. This is a fixed point on the Earth globe, with other words, True North is where all longitudes meet up or converge at the Earth's North Pole. If you align yourself with any meridian while facing North, you are directly facing True North. Please note that True North is a fixed geographical point and does not move, unlike the Magnetic North. Magnetic North is the North that your magnetic compass needle points to as it aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field. It is a point on the surface of the Earth at which the planet's magnetic field points vertically downwards. In other words, if a magnetic compass needle is allowed to rotate in three dimensions, it will point straight down. Unlike the true north, magnetic north is shifting every year by about 50 km per year and heading towards Siberia for now. Depending on where you are in the world, you might be at a point where both the true north and magnetic north are perfectly aligned. In this case, the magnetic declination, or simply variation, is zero. So the magnetic declination, also known as variation, is the angular difference between magnetic north and true north. Or you might be somewhere like the Arctic, where the declination is 180 degrees meaning the angle between true north and magnetic north is 180 degrees. Imagine if you were to navigate based on true north, you will go in a certain direction. However, if you were to navigate based on magnetic north, you will have to turn 180 degrees to go to the exact same point. Now, the terms variation and magnetic declinations, as discussed before, are used interchangeably. They both mean the exact same thing, which is the angular difference between magnetic north and true north. This angle can be as little as zero, where both true and magnetic north are perfectly aligned. And by the way, the lines passing through points of zero declination are called Igonic lines. Igonic lines, again, are lines that connect places on Earth where the magnetic variation is zero. And lines passing through points of equal magnetic declination or variation are referred to as isogonic lines. Now, for navigation, you have a true track and would like to fly a magnetic track. Simply, you need to apply variation or magnetic declination, whatever you want to call it, and then you get your magnetic track. And here is how to do it. We have the true track on the left, variation in the middle. Please keep in mind, east is least, west is best, and we would look at it in a second and then you obtain the magnetic track on the right let's look at an example for ease of understanding we have a true track from point a or airport a to airport b true track of 035 true first we need the variation which is usually given on the map if not try to find the nearest isogonal line isogonal line again is the line that connects points of equal magnetic variation so the nearest one to our area of operating would be this one. Next, you apply the variation to the true bearing. East is least, west is best. If the variation is easterly, that means we subtract the variation from the true track. And if it's westerly, we add. As we can see from this isogonal magnetic declination is 11 degrees 30 minutes east. Let's say 12 degrees east. So 35 of true bearing minus 12 degrees because it's easterly so east is least so we subtract and we get 0 to 3 magnetic track all right so if you would like to fly from point a to point b magnetic based on magnetic north then we have to fly 0 to 3 if you would like to fly from a to b based on true north then we fly 0 3 5 degrees all right now let's move to the grid north before we discuss grid north though, let's find out why do we need it. When navigating at or near the poles, whether north pole or south pole are alike, both meridians, which are lines of longitude, as well as the magnetic declination, vary rapidly to the point that makes navigating based on true north or magnetic north very challenging. This is why we came up with a new form of navigation reference. When operating near the poles, this reference is called grid north. 
Great North is a navigational phrase used to refer to the northward or a grid lines in a map projection. Great North contracts the true north and magnetic north in that it is aligned to grid lines and always points upward on a map. Please keep in mind though, as pilots, you will only need to know this for your written ATPL exams and ground school tests. As for real life navigation, at the poles nowadays we use RNAV system. RNAV is a system of navigation based on IRS, GPS, VR, DME, 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 and so on. All these systems are integrated with each other to pinpoint our exact position and where we need to go. With other words, grid navigation is hardly used in aviation at the time being, but it's worth knowing though. As you can see on the screen, all meridians are converging towards the poles. The amount of conversions is higher closer to the poles. This phenomenon, as discussed earlier, poses a problem for navigation at high latitudes. For example, an airplane needs to fly at point A, located at 70 north and 70 west, to point B, 70 north, 70 east. The shortest track between these two points is marked by the green line and known as grid circle track. As you can see from the animation, flying a grid circle track, the heading is constantly changing from A to B. To solve this issue, we could use so-called rump line track, represented by the red line. Flying a rump line track, your heading will remain unchanged throughout the journey. However, this track is further compared to the grid circle track, thus it is uneconomical. Another way to solve this issue is by imposing grid on flying by referring to grid north, where the aircraft can maintain a constant grid track. As seen on the animation, the aircraft is flying a constant grid track while flying a grid circle track from A to B, which is the shortest distance between two points in a sphere. Let's have a look at now how to calculate grid track. On the screen is a portion of a polar stereographic chart. Please note that the PSP, or Polar Stereographic Projection, is a type of map and chart projection used at higher latitudes, normally at 70 north and above. The direction of the meridians upwards is the direction of true north, marked by the red arrow lines. Zero degree longitude, also known as the prime meridian, is the reference meridian represented by the blue line. Keep in mind that for grid navigation it is essential that we use a reference longitude. It could be the prime meridian or the anti-prime meridian or any other meridian for that matter. Now, the parallel lines of this reference meridians are drawn at each longitude to cover the concerned area for navigation. To make the grid, next we draw a line from A to B. We will focus our intention at point A and the grid reference, which is prime meridians in this case, and point B. At the prime meridian, you can see that both true track and grid track are 90 degrees or 090. So grid track and true track are the same. At point A, however, we can see that true track is less than 90 degrees. In fact, it is 080 or 80 degrees. And the grid track is the angle between the grid north, represented by the blue line, and the track from A to B, represented by the black. We can clearly see that the grid track in this case is 90 degrees. Whereas at point B, true track is 100 degrees and the grid track is 090. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And also kindly consider subscribing to the channel to help spread the knowledge. Until the next video, see ya.